What up you commie pinko fucks? In this video, I'm gonna show you my process and the process that I've developed throughout this video on screen printing on a budget. This isn't gonna be anything like professional screen printing. This is just for propaganda. And so as to influence the culture, perhaps, this video is gonna be half narrated and half on the fly because I learned a couple of things while making it and I've integrated them into my process. I needed to find a good, nice, solid wood frame for the initial framework of the screen printing frame. So I'm gonna look for a picture frame, one that's flat enough that I can screen print with. I want the back of it to be flush, to be flat. Front of it doesn't matter too much. Avoid frames made of particle board, but the shit just falls apart. Don't touch shit like this. For the actual screen, I use sheer curtain, just grandma ass sheer curtain. Make sure it's 100% polyester because you're gonna be using a lighter on it. And you wanna look for the finest, the finest mesh count, basically, of any screen that you could find. It uh, doesn't matter what patterns on it. Patterns don't matter. Texture matters. If you find a texture like this where it's kind of like purposefully wrinkly, try and avoid it. So the next step is just like random hardware check, uh, Goodwill or otherwise. These things I've used for screen printing in lieu of a frame, but I don't tend to care for them. They're not super tight. Definitely get a bunch of coax cable that you can strip for the core. I found a whole fucking spool of it. This shit's common. Uh, if you get lucky, you find some paint at Goodwill in the wear section. When handling glass, I use suction cups. If I'm building a frame for multiple use, I definitely put hinges on it, and that's where these clamps come in. Squeegees are important. If you get lucky, you find one at Goodwill. If not, you'll have to go to a hardware store or like a local convenience store and find one that's right for you. Uh, if you could find a black light, find a black light. If you can't, you can go with the standard floodlight as long as it's not an LED because you're really needing the light for the UV that it emits. In a later section, I'm gonna show you how I calculated my times and my particular exposure from my particular light source. But first things first, we have to build the frame. Okay, once you've got your uh, thing, your frame with glass, cut this off. Take any old pair of pliers. These, these are pretty good if they're really tough to get out. You can lock them and yank them. Just don't break the glass. Don't break the glass, okay? Some of the glass in uh, picture frames like this, like old school ones especially, are pretty sharp. Uh, this one's semi-sharp. It's sharp enough to cut you, I think. So just uh, take it and put it aside. Make sure you don't break it, okay? Once you have this cleaned up and you have the glass out, what you're gonna wanna do is get yourself some of these uh, window frame pieces. They come pre-cut sometimes at Lowe's, but at that point, if you get those, you'll have to uh, base your frame around the dimensions of that. You align the whole sides with the channel part facing inwards uh, and just have these go all the way around. And this one's already cut here, so we'll use the edge of that. And actually, this one is already cut, so we'll use the edge of that. We don't need to cut all that. So we'll cut right here, right there, okay? Let's cut. When you're, when you're clamping this down, if you're using a clamp like I am, don't squeeze too hard because this little ridge here will bend in and you'll have to bend it out anyway. So just, just clamp it hard enough to hold it in place. And then uh, if you're using a handsaw, just go ahead and, just go ahead and cut it there. Mm. All right, nice and clean. These are, these are easy to find, but these corner pieces you'll have to get either online or you're, to, you're gonna have to go to fucking Lowe's and get them. Which, who wants to do that? People fucking talking to you, can I help you, sir? You look like you don't know what the fuck you're doing. Stick everything in place and then use some sort of adhesive to hold it down. Now, the thing that needs to happen though is that you do need to screw in these into the wood. At the tension that you're gonna hold this at, if you put just glue on this thing, uh, eventually it'll just rip it all off. Like it'll rip the sides off. Cause you're gonna, you, you know, we're gonna, I'll, sh I'll show you here in a minute what I mean. So let a little dot there, run it down. This is just to hold it in. You're gonna need to screw this in. What you need is a screw that's long enough to bite through the aluminum into the wood, but not enough to go all the way through. And this is kind of a thin frame, but these should do fine. You wanna countersink your screw points. So I'm gonna do three. I think that's enough, I'm gonna count it, 11. So we got 11 screws, we got four sides, We can do two on the short ends, but we can't do, can we do three? So two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have just enough. That's the best we can do. But before we get into that, we're gonna countersink using what, I don't know, I don't know what to call this thing. It's a, it's a, it's a countersink, you know. I'm gonna do this with two girls. The Walt, Black Magic, 
or whatever the fuck this is. It doesn't matter. They're all the same company. Now that I've countersunk this one, I'm just drill it all the way in. What you want to do is make sure this little gullet, this little, this little uh, gutter here, is nice and tight. So just take like a mallet and just like bang all the way down until the core that you're using, in my case I'm using something of this gauge, is kind of tight to get in there. We're gonna take the corner piece and we're gonna go, we're gonna align it with the corner of our frame. You could take your, your core, your whatever you got from the coax cable, put it at the top, and I like to use a tool that's meant for this kind of thing for window screens. Sorry about the color correction difference, that's fucking weird. These things have like a little a little divot right in the middle and that makes it a lot easier to tighten the screen, like hold it taut as you're doing this. So the first two sides we don't need to pull too tight in the, I guess in the axis perpendicular to the side. And that gives us enough room over here because we want some overhang here. This gives us enough room over here to pull taut this way. So already we're getting a pretty good result here. Give it a feel. We got some, you want to avoid stuff like this, like little tears and stuff, because it will affect the pattern. So we have it all the way around. Now we're going to work on the corners here. Uh, I'm going to use a letter opener and I'm going to use the back end of it. We don't want anything sharp because if it's sharp, it can cut through the screen. We don't want that. There's a little dip here, but usually you're not going to get a print that's all the way to the edge anyway. Realistically, your working area is like, like that big. It's it's not it's not super big compared to the frame. So always make a frame that's bigger than the print area by a couple, at least a couple inches. You're gonna push in that corner and carefully cut right to where it ends or where it begins rather. This is why it's important to do the mallet step on the edges first. If you get a problematic spot somewhere, you're gonna have to take this whole fucking frame out. <clears throat> now it's cutting time. The kind of scissors that I use don't have a point, they're like surgical. It's for like bandages and stuff. I got this at a flea market, I don't know how much. I don't wanna damage the curtain while I'm cutting it. Just cut it with the cut it with the idea of giving it enough room that you can tug on it and adjust tightness if you have to. Uh, and these edges are kind of dirty, but I'll show you how to clean them up because it's important to actually clean these edges up before we apply the emulsion because it'll affect, it may affect the print. It's not gonna be, it's not gonna be perfect, but it is DIY, so what are you gonna do? This step is uh, more important than it seems. If you can see these edges here, there's a bunch of little stray hairs and stuff. These get loose, they get stuck to the frame, and it's super hard to get them off, and you want this as smooth as possible when you put the emulsion on there, so you want to clean these up. The easiest way is with a lighter. Don't hold it on there too long, just run it down the edge, just like that. Uh, be forewarned, the shit stinks, it's polyester, so don't breathe it in. I'm sure it's not good for you. See, this is what I wanted to avoid. So I'm gonna cut this off because it's gonna get in my way. We don't want enough flap to get in the way of the print. Uh. Typically you only have to do one pass, but double check your work. Make sure you're getting all the little stray hairs. Double check your work. I got some loose ones here. Be sure to ask an adult before you fuck around with a lighter, kids. All right, because this shit's dangerous. All right, you don't want to set the house on fire. You don't want to hold it on there. Flea market's for the kids. Here's what happens when you set polyester on fire. It melts, because it's a plastic, and it fucking stinks. The emulsion part, there's two ways you can go about doing this. The DIY way is a little bit more of a pain in the ass, uh, and involves something called sensitizer. And I think you can make this, it comes in a powder form, you can make it out of that. The sensitizer though, it comes, they usually come in kits, but you can buy these alone on eBay. You can mix one part this to 10 parts Elmer's glue, and I've done this before for a couple of prints. I don't particularly care for the way it dries or even spreads. I hate the way it spreads, but yeah, I got this on sale, so I figured I'd try it. I don't do this method. I don't like this method, but you know, it's good to have it around in case I run out, but I still prefer to use this. So this is what we're going to use. This is available on Amazon. It's available on eBay. So I'm going to dim the lights a little bit because this is uh. photo sensitive. And when you get this, you'll get this bucket thing and a little thing you mix with it. To, to make it light sensitive. It's nice, it's good. Now that the lights are dimmed, there's no direct sunlight on this motherfucker. We're gonna take the emulsion. Be sure to have your squeegee on hand. I got this motherfucker at Goodwill. Woof, look at this, luxury. 
We want we want basically something to spread this around. So we're gonna take our emulsion, spread it out. Not too much, not too much. Whenever you're not using the emulsion, put the fucking top on it, all right? Put the top on it. If you're not using it, put the top on it. Even if you're using it and you just used it, you're just about to use it, put the top on it, okay? Okay, so we tilt this up, we grab this, we scoop. This is typically done with like a scoop tray, but I ain't got one of those. I got a squeegee. We're gonna go all the way around. We're gonna cover edge to edge as much as we can. Just basically spreading this and we're gonna have to do it on both sides. So this is where having a nice clean screen is a benefit because you don't get little hair stuck in here and you gotta fucking get them out. It pulls up on the, on the other side. So you gotta go back and forth basically. Just don't lay this down. We don't want it to touch the table because then it fucks up the whole squeegeeing process. You could see already there's a little, a little thing there. We'll work with it. We'll see what happens. Uh. It doesn't have to be super thin, but the thinner it is, the faster it dries. Now you, you want to lift up and, and basically check for holes. You don't want to hold it up to the fucking sun because it'll solidify the emulsion. So this is as good as I'm going to get it. Drying takes like maybe an hour. And if you want to speed it up, you can use a fan. He's a fan right here in the corner, and every so often I flip it around and stuff. But in the meantime, I'm going to wash my tools, wash my hands, just clean that up, and be sure not to turn your light on. You want this to dry in a nice and dark, cool area. Avoid any UV exposure, because this thing will solidify, like truly solidify under UV exposure. So we're gonna dry this up, and we're gonna come back when that's done. This next part's optional if you have a light already, but since I screen print enough, I decided to build an exposure box. So I found a frame that had a ridge on the inner part of it that was just thick enough to fit the glass on there while having it flush with the outer frame. All I really had to do was shave a little bit of the inside border there on the left to allow the glass to fit flush with the border. I then took one of the corrugated plastic steins that I stole from the government in another video. On one side, scraped the ink off of it with some rubbing alcohol. Rubbing alcohol doesn't work for all the boards, but it works for this one. Cleaning off the ink created a nice white reflective surface. Then I took some special LED lights that emit just UV light and I lined them up on the corrugated plastic in uh, 18 rows, I think. I, I didn't actually count. I just fucking did it and spaced it out, basically. The eBay listing had two rolls and a power supply, so I had plenty to spare. And then I had a fucking nosebleed. Uh, next, I made sure that the frame fit the board and did not cover up any LEDs that I had placed down. And I tinned the positive and negative leads of the LED strips. Uh, these strips have the lights already in parallel, so it did not matter whether or not I wired it in series or parallel, at least not that I can think of. I just wired them up positive to positive to positive and negative to negative to negative, and then I just connected the power supply that came with it. So the power supply that came with it has a on and off switch which enables me to properly time the exposure. Next couple of steps, I cleaned the glass. I cleared it of any particles and stuff because I was about to lay a film on it. I have this diffusion film that I got at Goodwill. It's usually for like bathroom doors and shit like that. So the neighbors don't see your butthole. Probably wasn't needed, but I feel like the light was too harsh. So I added it because I had it. Just make sure whatever you're using doesn't block the UV light you're emitting. So I got my exposure box built. The next step was to calculate the exposure time for my emulsion and this setup. For that, you'll have to print your design on a transparency film. You can get these on eBay or Amazon or whatever. Now all that's left to do is to guesstimate your exposure time. And be prepared to fail with this step because you're gonna, and you should. So you fucked up, you fucked up, that's okay. That's okay, don't worry about it. This is an exposure calculator online. This is what uh, was suggested by an actual screen printer. What I did is I cut it in half. And this will tell you in increments of whatever you calculate, your exact exposure time. So what I did was I took three minutes, I turned it into seconds, 180. I times it by 1.5, so 270. And I took 270 and I divided by 10, it's 27. So I exposed each of these increments by 27 seconds. And it's a cumulative. So 
what you do is 27 seconds, 27 seconds, 27 seconds, 27 seconds, 27 seconds, all the way down, and then everything in between, you see, you know, whether or not it exposed, whether or not it, it gets blown out or whatever. This is a different screen. Uh, this pattern here was pretty good up until right here, and especially down here, this pattern gets blown out. You're gonna calculate exactly where your perfect, or at least your good uh, exposure time is. And this pattern here, none of it really held through, so that's why I cut it off. I don't care, because I'm only exposing stuff uh, to this size or above. If you get a screen that's fine, like an actual screen printing screen, you'll get more detail out of this. But since I'm using sheer curtain, I don't. And that's fine with me, because I don't need to print anything that's small anyway, so I don't care. Depending on how you expose your screen, for, for example, using a, a exposure light above head, you want it to expose down. Facing forward, you want it to read right. I'm exposing with the exposure table, so I'm exposing from the bottom of the screen inward, and I want to block the light where the pattern is. And I want it inverted because I'm going to be screen printing from the inside. Tape it down as flat as possible. You want to do this instead of taping it directly to the to, oh shit, to the exposure table, because if we move this around during exposure with this tape like this, it's not a problem. If we tie it to the exposure table, we then risk you know bumping into this and then all the exposure parts are offset and we basically have to start over, we fuck up the entire thing. So once you got this down packed, flatten any, any hinges that you have on the edges and put this face down on the platform here. I tend to use a, just a used like giant mouse pad because that has a nice springiness to it and it doesn't, it's matte black so it doesn't reflect back. And we're gonna put it face down on there and then we're gonna take some weight, just a huge flat tile, and we're gonna put it face down like that. And we're gonna put it on top and we're gonna just make sure everything's flat. If your power supply came with a little switch like this one, you wanna make sure this is set to off. So you're gonna use a timer, any kind of timer, and I'm gonna set mine, since I already know my exposure, I'm gonna set mine to three minutes. So three minutes, hand on the switch, and this on here, I'm gonna trigger both simultaneously. So basically you just wait there, we put that here. Uh, I'm gonna use this to lift it off. Once I get close to that time, I put my hand directly on the switch. After you're done exposing, you don't want to turn any lights on, you don't wanna do anything like that. You wanna work basically in a very dim, non-direct light. 18 seconds to go, we're good. Be sure to have your hand on it. And we are almost... Cool. All right, be sure to stick to the time because you wanna know that you're accurate. So we're gonna take this weight off and we're gonna take the mouse pad off and then flip your design over and take the film off. Be sure to take the tape off as well. It's gonna come off in the sink anyway. And now we go to wash off. You don't have to do this part, but I tend to do this because it makes stuff easier. What I'm gonna do is dink, whoops, dunk this, and fucking take this tool out of here, and just let this sit for like 30 seconds, whatever, just a little bit. You don't have to put any chemicals in it, just water's fine. This makes it easier because this softens the emulsion that was not exposed. You don't wanna leave it in here too long, so I'm gonna take it out. You can kinda already see the design there but we're gonna complete this process by taking it to the sink. You don't have to put pressure on it. Just, just wash it forward and backwards and make sure you get everything soaked. You take something like a wet sponge and just scrub, just scrub. And you can already see the patterns lifting up. Take your water source, spray it again. If you're getting a pattern that's blowing out completely, you haven't exposed it enough. If you're getting a pattern that hasn't blown out or details that haven't blown out, it means you exposed too much. You have to find that middle ground in between the two. Just do it until you feel like, if you hold this up, you feel like every single pixel, so to speak, of your pattern is good to go. Now my details did hold up pretty well. I got a single blowout here. Actually this definitely cut all the way through and this was a blowout. So. We may not have exposed long enough. With all the patterns being washed and everything being good. One last run there. And now we dry. All right, once we're satisfied with how dry this is, or at least how dry we can get it, we're going to take our exposure 
exposure unit or exposure light, put this against it and just expose it. There's no set time here. There's no need to flatten this down because all you're doing is finishing up the job on both sides for this emulsion. We can flip it. You don't have to have it on there the entire time. It's still wet. This, this isn't going to dry it. This is just going to take the softened emulsion and hit it with UV just to, just to finish the process, right? You don't have to leave the UV on the entire time. You could turn that off and just come back to it when you're ready to screen print. This needs to be bone dry though. So we're just gonna go through that process. Once we're satisfied with how dry it is and we're satisfied with the exposure and everything's good, there's no sticky parts or anything like that, we're gonna take this to our screening table. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the hinges that I attached to the frame and I'm gonna put them down at the edge of the table. Now I'm gonna take my grips, so to speak, and adjust them so they're under the table clamping downward. You want to set this in such a way that you're able to lift this up and let it stay there. What we have is a little off contact, which is what we want. We don't want this to be directly, directly flush with the thing that we're printing on because this screen gets filled with ink and then when you press down is when you apply the ink to the medium. So there's technically two steps in screen printing. It's not just, it's ink fill, then ink press down upon the medium. Before we do that, we gotta tape these sides because we want a border around here because we don't want any ink to spill off into this un sections here onto the medium underneath. Uh, at a flea market, I got some of these. And these are, what are this? Three for five. And this is just a plain black t-shirt. So check your flea markets. Uh, these are new as opposed to the ones you'd get at Goodwill, which are used basically. Regular Gildan shirt, just cotton. So there's different kinds of inks and they do different things and they dry in different ways. Most of my inks are acrylic. Just acrylic, you know, just acrylic ink. I've got a shit ton of it. It's what I use on most things. It's the most compatible with most mediums depending on what I'm printing on. But there's also other inks like professional screen printing inks for fabric. Free Craigslist ad for screen printing ink. It was two inks. This is one of them. Oh shit, I already got, see? High quality ink on a shirt. It takes a fucking long time to dry. It's pretty strong. It's pretty, you know, this, this is good. In order for this to work properly, we need something to put in between the shirt and the back of the shirt, the inside of the shirt. I'm using another piece of Regina, whatever the fuck her name was. If you're doing multiple colors, you might want to do something a little more heat resistant than this because you're going to be curing in between colors. So don't use plastic. Flatten this out. Top of our pattern is at the 10 inch mark right here. There's a 10. Four to three inches is where we want the pattern to start straightens out this. You don't want to pull this too taut, the fabric, because then the pattern will be stretched out. You want it just relaxed. This is made for fabric. This is a plastisol. This is one of the first inks I bought when experimenting. This is just flat white. I'm gonna use this as an underbase to my acrylic paint, if I can fucking open it. Get a Guardian to open something if you can't open it. You don't want to strain yourself and blow your asshole out. I'm going to be using a gold ink, but first I'm going to be doing a white plastisol underbase. We're going to create a line down here in the channel that we created with masking tape. We're going to do what's called flooding the screen. So we're going to take from the very bottom here, from the very bottom, we're going to pull up while applying downwards pressure, but not too much. Just enough to fill the screen. You see that? That fills the screen. Okay, and this excess, just leave it up there, it'll stay. Okay, now we're gonna place this down. We've got one shot to do this. We're gonna push it down and then apply straight downward pressure. Get as close to the bottom of the squeegee as you can to apply that pressure. Press down with one hand and apply. This is applying the ink to the medium. That's the one stroke we need. We lift up and we're good. Don't let any of this drip onto the medium. Take this over another surface with your ink and squeegee that back in there. At this point, just let this dry a little bit and you're gonna be applying heat to it to set it. Do this over another surface. Don't do it over this like I am, I'm just showing you. In between colors, if you only have one screen, you're gonna wanna wash that screen, let it dry and redo the whole taping process like I'm gonna do off camera. All right, this video is gonna be long as fuck. Jesus Christ. Second layer of ink on top of our first layer of ink. But look at that, beauty. Beauty. We're gonna load with the little one. We're gonna load our, ooh, this stuff's a little more watery, so you gotta be careful. So we're gonna lift up our screen and fill. Fill. Okay, now we're gonna place it down. 
holding it down. Let me unhook it and show you. We're gonna move this aside. Uh, it's all right, whatever, it's DIY. You can always paint over it with black ink. Uh, whatever you need to do to fix it, if it's, not, if it's not ideal, if it's not to your you know, liking, you can always try and fix it, it doesn't hurt. This part's more uh, dissemination, but put a fucking sticker on it. Collect these stickers ahead of time if you're gonna do that, depending on your target. Mine are Walmart, but you can choose whatever you want. Regardless of the collateral profit that you generate for the company, the important part is getting your message out there. Get like a, a gun, a tagging gun, and obviously steal some tags from your store, your target store. But this, I haven't used it yet. I'm waiting on the perfect target. Get this out there. It doesn't matter if people buy it, people see it. And they see it in the right context. That's what matters. If they see this out in the street, graffiti or whatever, or like posters you put up, they'll roll their eyes and then they'll walk away. The legitimacy of it being in Walmart forces the average person to think about what this means within the context of Walmart selling it to you. Context of dissemination matters. This is why we put this in Walmart or whatever store we choose and legitimize it. If you want to learn more about screen printing, check out a legitimate screen printer. I'm not a screen printer. I'm not a rapper. So check out Cam at The Print Life. I learned everything I know from that guy. Not all of it retained very well, as you can clearly see. Now that you know, you can use this in your own endeavors. Go out there, make something, make it concise, make it simple, and make it at least look good. Because if somebody does buy this, hey, make it look good. So I'm going to stick this in a Walmart and stay woke. Thank <laughs> you.